Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This video is about Hydrops fetalis. It is also known as fetal hydrops. It is a serious fetal condition defined as abnormal accumulation of fluid in two or more fetal compartments. It results from the rate of production of interstitial fluid exceeding absorption. It is characterized in the fetus by gross generalized edema, ascites, pleural or pericardial effusion. Now in some patients it may also be associated with polyhydramnias and placental edema. If still present at birth, it results in severe illness. Now, incidence is 71 per 2500 to 1 per 4000 births. Pathogenesis Hydrops is due to underlying disease, singularly or in combination, resulting in increased capillary hydrostatic pressure, decreased colloid osmotic pressure lymphatic obstruction, capillary leaking. Now the important causes of hydrops fetalis. One is immune causes, hemolytic disease of the newborn such as allomune, RH, Kel and others. B is non-immune causes. This may include cardiac structural anomalies such as Epstein anomaly and in utero closure of the ductus arteriosus, hypoplastic left or right heart, aortic valvular stenosis, coarctation of aorta, truncus arteriosus, arrhythmias, supraventricular tachycardia, atrial flutter, cardiomyopathies, torch, and other viral infections. Another cause is fetal anemia due to twin twin transfusion, alpha thalassemia, fetal maternal transfusion, intracranial or intraventricular hemorrhage, hepatic laceration or subcapsular hemorrhage, isoimmune fetal thrombocytopenia. Third is infection, torch, parvovirus B19. Fourth cause is metabolic disorders such as glycogen storage disease type 4, kosher disease, Morkew disease, Hurler syndrome, neiman pick disease type C. Next is chromosomal syndromes such as beckwith whiteman syndrome, tri syndrome, Turner syndrome and trisomy 2113 and 18. Sixth cause is malformation, such as congenital cystic adenomatide malformation, bowel atresia, AV malformation, lymphatic cystic hygroma, and it may be idiopathic. Now the associated complications. These include intrauterine or perinatal death, obstetric complications, for example, shoulder dystocia. Preterm labor, pulmonary hypoplasia, for example due to pleural effusion, and perinatal asphyxia. Now the management of hydrops fetalis. Disorders treatable antenatally. These include intrauterine blood transfusion for hemolytic disease or parvovirus infection. Antiarrhythmic drugs to treat fetal SVT. Laser ablation of the fetal vessels due to twin twin transfusion syndrome. Now, birth planning. Before birth, organize expert help. If anemia likely, have available C and V negative O negative blood irradiated, cross match blood against the mother. Prepare for full resuscitation, ventilation, UVC insertion. Now the new natal management. First is the resuscitation. This includes ventilation and intubation. Paracentesis and thoracentesis. 
blood transfusion or partial exchange transfusion. Supportive management include cardiac support for example pressors and inotropes and respiratory support including mechanical ventilation and oxygen inhalation. Chest tube placement and drainage of ascites. Now fluid and electrolyte management, treatment of anemia such as blood transfusion or partial exchange transfusion. Treatment of infections, octreotide to treat chylothyrax and ascites. Now the prognosis, for fetuses or infants with non-immune high drops, the survival rates are variable in the range of 50%. Higher survival is reported in infants with SVT, chylothyrax, and parvovirus infection. Now, lower survival rates are in those with chromosomal abnormalities. Survival rates with immune high drops is more than 80%. Now, neurodevelopmental outcome depends on the cause. Okay, friends, thanks. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel.